Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Last night, I did something I don't think I have ever done in my whole entire life. I set my alarm clock for 2 a.m., um, something that was quite difficult. But I am here. I made it uh, out of bed, and I'm excited. The occasion, the special occasion for which um, I would do such a, an insane thing is um, uh, the opportunity to shoot with a new camera and the opportunity to do some night photography. So I'm gonna take you along. I'm in a small town. We're here um, for a race, a mountain bike race um, for my son. And uh, I left the hotel to do some night photography in this beautiful little town. I really love rural night scenes. Um, I used to shoot them a lot more often. In fact, there's a few of you still around that were here five years ago or so when I when I released my first few videos and you'll remember um, those fortunate I don't know few that <laughs> have been around that long will remember that my first videos were in fact terrible first off maybe they still are but they were even worse then um, and a lot of them were were night photography because I had horrible insomnia I just could never sleep and so I figured why not be creative and go out and shoot and do night photography um, so it's, it's been a bit I mean I've done some here and there but today um, I want to get back out there and, and shoot some and I want to talk about my favorite camera for shooting night photography and the, the new camera that I have um, and some of you will remember last year I did a, a video comparison comparing a Google phone to uh, the Canon um, RP what I found is that it was very controversial. A lot of people hated that video. It was one of my most downvoted vo videos, uh, something I, I don't care much about as much <laughs> anymore, as many of you know. Uh, I just kind of do my thing, and if you like that, great. But um, I really firmly believe that the best camera for night photography is one of these. Um, well, not necessarily this camera, but smartphones like it that have um, the night vision capability. Um, so this, of course, is the new Pixel 5a, um, which I've been itching to, to get out of the box. In fact, my wife has actually, Danae has been even more interested in because her camera is destroyed. So she's been <laughs> every day, when are you gonna do that video? But I really wanted to just unbox it fresh um, with you guys and try it out. Um, before we, you know, set it up as a phone, um, they usually come with a little bit of battery life. I probably should have charged it first, but, um, yeah, I'll charge this up. The Google 5a, this isn't Google's top phone. Um, this is kind of the consumer version, but nevertheless, the, the camera, um, and the, or the two, the two lenses and the sensors that are associated with them, I feel like are, are fine they're they're not you know they're not better than what i'm filming this video on the xt4 by any stretch of the imagination and in under any other circumstance i would of course prefer my fuji cameras my gfx my xt4 even for night photography of course i would prefer those devices if i was using a tripod but i really don't like to use a tripod when i'm out there in rural landscape situations in the at 2 a.m uh, the last thing I want to do is pull up in front of an establishment or even worse, some sort of, sort of rural, um, you know, home and set up a tripod and point it at somebody's home. Uh, that's a great way to uh, get shot, worst case scenario, um, but or any number of other unpleasant things. But being able to roll up with a phone that actually does an excellent much better job than I would have thought um, so much so that I was just shocked when I first tried it you know a year ago and compared it to that Canon RP and felt like the images that it produced were better again handheld not necessarily on a tripod but handheld I felt like the images could compete uh, not only compete but potentially were better going through that experience taught me that this is the way to go for so many reasons because of the stealth, the um, computational um, photography uh, that it provides. Now, if they could build in something like um, the night night sight 
vision or I guess capability which this has uh, into a mirrorless camera I might prefer that uh, I, I don't maybe I wouldn't mind rolling up with an X-T4 or something small like a, a Sony um, uh, RX something that had that capability but but they don't have it right the smartphones have to come up with computational photography to be able to compete but it's so good it's just so good um, and it produces almost without fail results that I'm happy with and so that's what I'm going to use. Hopefully that won't offend anyone or bother anyone too much. I think it probably will because some people just don't like uh, phones, smartphones, gaining any ground on, on uh, the camera market, um, which I certainly can understand, but I'm also here to create the best possible art I can with the least amount of effort possible, and I really think this is the way to do it. So I've yammered on enough. I think that's enough talk. Let's go get some rural nightscapes. I've been driving the length and breadth of this town, at least half of it. it so far, striking out a little bit. I, I, I kind of like this little scene right here. It has some nice angles, but I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's not, it doesn't quite do it for me, but I think I'll still shoot it as a way to just get something um, in the can and feel like I'm accomplishing something because so far, I don't know, I mean, I've started at the north end of this town and just been driving the, the length and breadth and uh, like I said, so far just not seeing much that's, that's really caught my attention. Um, so we'll start here and uh, I don't know. I kind of like it. Maybe it'll grow on me. So behind me is exactly the type of scene that I'm talking about where I don't feel like I could roll up and, and take a large camera, let alone a tripod and set up and take the shot, but it's a beautiful shot and one that I want to grab. Uh, it's one of those kind of peaceful porch nights night scenes that um, Yeah, I, I, it's more more of a walk by pull the camera out and take it really fast and conspicuously uh, To be able to get so um, I'm not gonna video myself getting these shots But I think I'll walk walk over there and, and try a couple of shots on this this little street and hope that um, no one is bothered I really love this scene right here. I might just try to take it from the car really quick. I saw this little storage unit off the side of the road. Uh, this is as close as I could get with the gate. There's a camera here. They're probably gonna be like, who's this dude scoping out this storage unit? But I kinda like it. I don't know if I'm too far away or not, but we'll give it a shot. Here's some things that I like and don't like about Night Sight. It has good focus locking, which, you know, that's not a biggest issue with night scenes. But I like that you can focus right on that brightest light source or um, semi-brightest light source and kind of get the exposure pretty well and then you can adjust with the uh, with the dials up top. The dial here with the moon up top that's going to change your ambient kind of darkness recovery which I usually try to leave pretty low although you can get away with pretty high and night sight will it'll you know computationally gather all the photos it needs to get a pretty clean pretty noise-free shot, but I tend to just let the darks fall off and then you can adjust the exposure here. Oh wow, this is really hard to do one-handed. And then to take the photo, obviously, you push the button and hold still, which I'm not doing a very good job of one-handed. I'll, I'll put this camera down and use two hands and get a better shot here, but you get the idea. The only thing I don't like, literally the only thing, is that there's that, you see that little reflection? 
there's this little tiny ghosting that happens, lens flare, that is slightly annoying. It's a little blue dot. And I get that a lot with this camera. I can't remember that with my other Google phone if it did that or if that's just this one. That's one thing you're just gonna have to pop out and, uh, you know, magic away with uh, Photoshop or Lightroom, that little clone stamp, that little blue reflection out. That's super annoying. But other than that, I can't say that there's much I don't like uh, about this process. So anyway, a little preview of why I like Google Night Sight. Looking at the back of this Taco Time restaurant, I think there might be a shot here somewhere. So I'll walk over there and see if I can find a composition I like. There are a couple shots on this street. I'm talking quietly so I don't wake anyone up. Right here, this kind of an old dilapidated shot. And then over here, there's this really pretty lights um, in front of this house. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting duality, kind of uh, something beautiful, something not so beautiful. One of my absolute favorite things to photograph at night is service stations because they always leave their lights on and it's just magical. But I just am really drawn to those uh, service center uh, shop uh, night scenes. Um, and I, I think I found a shop finally. This is one of the things I've been looking for tonight. I think I finally found one that, that might be good. So I'm gonna walk around and see if I can get an angle of it that I like. This scene right here captures everything that I love about night photography so well. This narrow alley, this kind of discarded mop, broken broom head, this kind of eerie, tells sort of a story I guess, alludes to a story, but ah, man I just love scenes, love shots like this, and I love the symmetry and variation that's in this shot. Um, I just love everything about this shot. One question I do get a lot, and sorry about the awkward angle, I forgot a tripod on this trip. One question I do get a lot um, when I do these night photography escapades is uh, you know, does anyone ever question me or stop me or do I ever get into any kind of trouble or, you know, do police ever, you know, whatever. Um, and the answer is not, no, I have never actually been encountered by anyone giving me a hard time. And I have done these quite, I've done this quite a lot. Um, one thing I do usually have is business cards, so in case I get cop stopped by a cop who's like, what are you out here taking photos of, I can, I can give him a business card and say, <laughs> at least give a little bit of legitimacy to what I'm doing. Um, so I've, I have that, I've never had to actually use that. I've used those on my rural photography during the day when I stop and talk to people just to reassure them. Um, but at night, I've never actually spoken with anyone ever. The only thing I ever had happen, and I actually had this on one of my episodes, I think it took it down just because it was not a great episode, meaning I didn't get any really good shots, uh, was one time a police officer was tailing me, was right behind me, and my left turn signal at the time and my car wasn't working. <laughs> so. He didn't pull me over, he was just making me super uncomfortable by tailing me. 
and um, I didn't want to make a left turn <laughs> with, because I didn't have a left turn signal that worked. So I ended up going home by taking all right turns. <laughs> this cop followed me the whole way, me taking the weirdest route home, all right turns. And uh, uh, fortunately, because there was one left turn I was gonna have to make, fortunately he stopped right before I reached my neighborhood back home again. But yeah, that's the, that's the most interesting thing that's ever happened as I've been out and about. Um, but it never hurts to be prepared with business cards. Um, just in case, I guess. And the other thing I'll say about night photography is that it is, I find it super inspiring. I can, you know, be sick of my hometown or, or not feel like I can find any interesting shots whatsoever. Um, and just kind of be, I know you guys have all been there, especially those of you like me who tend to shoot what's around you, documentary style, not necessarily, you know, portraiture or studio business or events or stuff like that. Um, you can get to the point where you don't feel it anymore and you're kind of sick of where you are. Go out at night um, and it's a different world. In my last video I compared it to kind of the upside down in Stranger Things where it opens up a whole new kind of darker world. Um, everything is different um, and it brings new opportunity to photography that you didn't see. Uh, a lot of you don't have that luxury if you live in an unsafe environment where going out at night you're going to be in danger but but for those of you like me who live in who have access to small towns um, or you know s safer areas uh, I would really encourage you to give it a shot um, all right I am getting tired so you know we're at almost 4 a.m. I feel like I've got some good shots but you know, I don't want to. I don't want to overstay my welcome in this town. <laughs> but more importantly, don't want to be exhausted tomorrow. And it is actually starting to rain, which does not bode well for my son's mountain bike race. Fingers crossed that the rain does not get bad, and that we can still have that race. But um, I'm gonna wind myself back towards our hotel, see if there's any other shots. If I do encounter any more, I'll put them on the screen now. But. Other than that, if I don't get any, then this is farewell until next time, guys. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope that you found it entertaining in some way. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you again real soon.